Welcome everyone back to Anchor of Hope. We had a few weeks where we took off for Christmas, New Year's, and now we're back uh, in full force and uh, the power of the Holy Spirit. So Chuck will be teaching tonight on the armor of God, and it's something we have to understand, and he's going to teach us partially tonight, and then the next time around finish up. The importance of understanding who we are in Christ, the protection we have in Christ, and the power we have in Christ. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this time that we are back together. Uh, we just ask, Holy Spirit, that we have just spoken that you would be here, and we know you are in your full presence and in your full power. We just ask that you would speak through our brother Chuck tonight, the importance of understanding that we can go through the battles of life because you are with us and because you have suited us with your armor that will protect us against any wiles, anything that the enemy has to bring for us, whether here on earth or as the battles are being fought in the heavenlies. So bless him tonight, Lord, as he speaks. Let it be a confidence to us, not in our own goings, in our own fightings, but in what you do for us, Lord God, through your Son, Jesus, and the power of your Holy Spirit. So bless this time, encouragement and strengthening. In your precious name, Jesus, amen. Amen. All right, welcome back, everybody. Like uh, Pastor Dave said, I'm going to be teaching uh, the first of the of two parts to the armor of God and right now I'm going to just give a little bit of back uh, back information about it Paul wrote this in around the time of 60 AD when he was under house arrest uh, in Rome for preaching about Jesus um, while he while he was on house arrest he was in constant contact with guards the Roman military. And while this was going on, he used what he was seeing. He was seeing them in their uniforms. And when he looked back, he was thinking about how this applies into God's world. And that's where he came up with this. He wrote this to, the, uh, to Ephesus. And his writing to the, was to them, they were the new believers because they were a new church. And he wanted to give them the hope and the confidence, but also give them the warning of what was about what they were gonna, about to go through. So he, uh, when he was writing to them, he wanted to, to, uh, for them to stand firm against the old influences and devo be devoted to God's love and unity. So uh, verse 10, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Paul was warning the believers of if, that they were in a spiritual battle against unseen forces of darkness. He wanted to make sure they were strengthened and that they were able to take on what was about to come. Um, I related to this because in the military, we have this what we call security updates, warning briefings. And as what it is, is someone's given us the information of about, what, uh, about what's gonna happen or what they believe is gonna happen. And the main thing is, is to give us the confidence so that we know, so we're not going in it without no information, no protection, no nothing. And when we do, when uh, he was doing this, he was trying to give them confidence. Now, in the military, confidence is the biggest thing. When I was in Iraq, and I had all my body armor on, and when you have that, when you have that armor on and you know that it works and that you believe in it and trust in it, you have the confidence to run into any situation. And when you have that confidence, you get a little bit of an ego, too. You know you can't be hurt. Or if they hurt you, it's God's will. And that, but to me, it was 
when I went into those firefights, I knew I was coming back because I had all the armament that was protecting all my vital areas. And yes, I could still get shot in the arm, shot in the leg, but still in that point, you knew you had a, a great chance of coming back because we had what we call our battle buddies in Christianity. We call them our brothers and our sisters that if anything happens to us, they can grab us and pull us back. And when you have that confidence, you, get you don't have to deal with the fear. And that fear is the main thing that can keep you from winning a battle. Because when you have fear, you might not even start to fight. You might just run, hide, or even give in. So confidence is what leads into winning the war, winning the battles, and winning the fight for the Lord. So let's, uh, let's look at verse 11. Put the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. Now, I can go on for days what schemes that the devil has. There's, it's everywhere. But let's look at a couple of them that I wrote out or put out. And the first one will be uh, the devil's schemes. And the, the next will be God's, uh, God's plan. So how many of you, I, I mean, for me, I used to live by a way of saying, me first, I'm gonna take care of myself. It's all about me. And that, that is the devil's scheme. He doesn't want you to think about anybody else or believe in anybody else. But God's plan is put God first because he's gonna do all the protection, he's gonna do all the work, and he's gonna make everything happen. Another one is, the devil's all about lies. And that, He'll convince you with lies. He'll have you tell lies. But as what God's plan is, he wants to be all about truth. Truth is everything about God, and that's the power. Because when God says it, it's so true, you can believe it 100%. And when you believe something with 100%, you have that confidence. And that because it's not going to fail you. God doesn't fail us. We fail God. So uh, the other, next one is fear. Like I was just talking about, fear will keep us from doing certain things. It'll keep us from moving forward. It'll have us run away, all that. God's plan is love. And when you love something enough, and that you will stay and fight till the end. One of the things in the military, and that it's God country and family and that when you love God enough you're going to fight for him and you're not going to stop if you love your country enough and that you will fight till the end for your country and that your family you will fight till the end to protect your family even with sacrificing yourself if necessary all those things in the end come to love so if we're in love we are strong and that's what God's plan is. <clears throat> the next one that in, in the devil's schemes is discouragement. He wants you to be discouraged all the time. And that he wants you to be upset, have that anger kick in, all that stuff. But that's not God's plan. He wants you to be confident. And that he wants you to be strong. He wants everything to be 100% you through him. When you're through him and the confidence is there, nothing is impossible. And I honestly believe that. I have seen missions that we should never have won. But when we have confidence, nothing can stop us. And when you're confident enough, you'll take on things like you've never had before. And that when a, even a builder who's never built a house or done anything, and that if they have the confidence that they can have the skills to do it because they have the tools, the training, and that not only can they build it, but they can build amazing things. And that's because God makes that possible. 
another thing is the devil wants you to be angry. He, he loves anger. Because when you're, ang- when you're angry, you can't focus on what's right. You, don't, you, you get hatred in you. You, get, you want to do revenge, all that stuff. And that, but you know what God wants? God's plan is patience. He wants you to be patient with everything. Instead of getting angry, because that's the devil's scheme, he wants you to be angry all the time. God wants you to be patient because he has the plan, he has the answer, and he has the ability. Sometimes it goes back to my, to my way. I want to do it my way. Well, sorry, it's got to be God's way. And that, the devil has one plan, and it's, almost, it's always opposite of what God wants because he wants to s- take that connection like this and separate it. He wants it as far away as can be. And that God, his plan is to bring us all together. And that he wants us tighter, stronger. And when I was talking to Pastor Dave about this, when we're together and strong, we can defeat all enemies. Now, when I joined the military, it was called the, the army had a, their theme was a soldier one. That did not mean that there was only one person. There was thousands, but together we were one. And when we were one, we were the strongest military in the world. And instead of us having fear, we wanted everybody else to have the fear. And when they had the fear, They didn't want to fight with us. But we had the confidence that the fight had to happen. We were going to take care of the problem. And that's how God is. God's telling you, we are all together. And that when the problem hits together, we're going to win. We're going to be victorious. That's everything God wants. He wants us to be victorious in so many different ways. And that he already knows how it's going to end. The problem is we don't know how it ends. And when we give our faith, our belief to him, we will win and we will be stronger. And we will go on to do amazing things. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. Verse 12, 13, and 14 are, For our struggle is not against flesh or blood, but against the rulers against the powers, against the world's forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist on the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, have the belt your waist with truth, having put the breastplate of righteousness. Now, before I go into the belt of truth, and uh, did anybody notice that we kept on hearing, stand firm? When you, Pastor Dave taught me when I was learning to read the Bible and all that, look for the words that keep on repl- coming up one after another. Because that's not just words being put in a book. That is actually something he really, really wants you to listen to and to do. It, to me, is almost like a commandment. And that he's telling you, stand firm, stand firm, stand firm. And that's what he wants you to do. Now, uh, let's talk about the truth, the belt of truth. Now, he's looking, like I said, he's taking this from the Roman guards. And that, that he was in constant contact with while being on house arrest. Now, their belts and that were made of leather. And then they had leather straps going down in front of their groin. And on these thick st- straps, they had metal plates on it, made of brass. And that was to protect their groin area. Now, I was joking around with the me and Pastor Dave were ta- talking about it, and we were joking around. But in reality, it's a very sensitive spot for a guy, the groin area. And as any guy, any man growing up, when you get kicked between the legs as a kid, it hurt and you were down for a while. And, that, and just like today, it's important. That area is important to men. So they want you to protect it because it's also part of reproducing 
men urinating, a way of doing that. It's all part of God's plan. But you got to remember, that's a sensitive area to guys. So they took the time to make sure it was protected. And in our military, we used to have a groin pad that was on the belt. Over time, it changed to where we could hook it onto our, our breastplates. But it's still the purpose of protecting a vital part. Now, let's see. The, let's talk about the chest plate. They had two different types of chest plate in those times. The first one was a brass plate that you could, was in strips that you can go like, the, it would go around your whole body, and then you would leather it and strap it together, and it would be tight. And that it would go all the way from up top, all the way down, to about into the lower uh, stomach area. And is what that was doing is protecting vital organs. Everything to life is part from here down. And that without most of that, you can't survive. So it was very, they wanted to protect it. The second way they would protect it is what they call mail chain. And that which is just metal circles that were hooked together in a tight bunch, and that would protect you. Now, see, going back to the belt, with anything, the metal plate, or the metal chest plate, or the metal chain, the belt would go around it to keep it out of your way so that you can maneuver. And that if it was just flopping around, you couldn't fight to protect yourself, couldn't do what you were supposed to do. So that's why the belt was very important when you put all this together. Now, the chest plate means a lot to me. And that when I was in Iraq at the end of my last tour in Iraq, I was blown up by an RPG. And an RPG has a kill rate of 10 meters. Everything inside 10 meters, you should be dead. Well, my chest plate and all, all that took the absorbed, the all the shrapnel and everything. And all my vital organs, luckily, survived. And that, don't get me wrong, I have scars everywhere else on sides of my body and that from the explosion. But the part that was inside that was important, the heart, the lungs, spleen, liver, all that, that breastplate and that took, absorbed all the concussion and the shrapnel. So what that did is it kept my heart from stopping, my breathing from stopping. That's what this plate that Paul's talking about is supposed to be doing. It's to protect your vital organ. You know, when God's in your heart, as long as it's protected, you can't, your heart will not stop. So he's using the metaphors back and forth. I'm using them too because that's how I relate to him. I relate to him through military. And, that, and that's why this was important to me. But I get to stand here victorious on that because of the fact that I had armor. Now, in life, I get to have victorious things here now because I got the armor of God, the chest plate. He's right here, and I want to protect that him in my heart at all times. And God's given me the tools, the equipment to do that. That's what all this is. It's not about real armor or anything. It's about the fact that God has given you everything you need to protect you from what's about to come. The darkness cannot take over you because he is protecting you. And all this, the reality is, God is the armor. So think of it this way. He's actually hugging you around, and he's the chest plate. He's the groin guard. and that Because the truth is his word. His word states that he will help you he will protect you he will love you he will give you victory and that as long as you believe in him and give him the faith and that's what most of this is going to so now the third one the last one i'm going to talk about tonight is having it's called the strap of your feet the preparation for the gospel of peace what we're talking about is the sandals. 
and uh, they were leather sandals that would be wrapped up around your legs and that to stay tight. But the most important part was the sole of, the, of it. It was studded soles so that you can grip the ground. And that, again, it's because God wants you to be able to stand firm. And that, now, have you ever seen anybody walk through glass and just be okay? Or when glass goes in your foot, do you stop because it hurts? Or if you cut your foot, the bottom of your feet, you can't walk? And this is what we're talking about. And that you can, if you do not have the proper equipment to get around, and that you cannot keep moving forward. You have to stop and either give up. Or slow down. God doesn't want you to slow down. He wants you at full force, full strength all the time. And that, when I was in Iraq, and that we walked, for, we were on patrol, we moved from Kuwait into Iraq. And one thing I learned there is proper fo footwear is important. Now, originally when we got there, the old black boots that everybody knows from the military were good, but during the summers, they melted. And so they had to start looking at different types of boots that would be able to handle the heat, handle the terrain. Because as we were moving forward, they would melt, and they would, it would be harder to move forward. And anybody that works construction knows that when your footwear gets bad and you buy bad shoes that don't fit, and you're walking around, your foot starts to hurt, so what do you do? You slow down. You try not to do your best because you're trying to baby your foot. You don't, you're having a bad day. And so footwear is very important. When they talk about the peace, you gotta remember this. I was with, when I went in to the, uh, from Kuwait to Iraq, we were on a mission called Rendezvous with Destiny. It was the very first wave of Iraq. And as our mission statement was to win the hearts and the minds of the Iraqi people that we could uh, be, bring peace to the region. And that's the same mission as what he's talking about. If we have all the proper equipment, we can move forward. We can bring peace to the region. And, the, and in the process, Hope to win the hearts and the mind. Well, as Christians, that's what we're hoping to do. We're going to bring the gospel all over the world. That's what God wants us to do. And that he gives us all the equipment we need to do this, just like the military gave us all the equipment we needed to make this happen. If we can bring peace to Iraq, I know it doesn't seem like we did, we're bringing peace right now, but from, when I was there, I was there in the first wave. I was th there back in 2009. And uh, Iraq had changed so much from the beginning. And that uh, we were being, bringing peace there. And, uh, and we had won a lot of the hearts and the minds of the, of the Iraqi people. And, uh, and that's what God's trying to do. And that's what Paul is writing about. Not only an emphasis where, they wanted a, where he wanted this to start, he didn't say just do it right there. He wanted them to move around, make the church bigger, make the peace, bring Christianity to the world. And that's what he wants to this day, and that's why we still need the armor of God. I don't know how many times I've been attacked by the darkness. How many times I wanted to give up being a Christian and that because I would get upset with myself. I didn't do it right, or I'd screwed something up. And, you know... I could have walked away, and that, but this whole time, and I didn't even know it, he was giving me the tools, the equipment, and the more I read, the main thing is the Bible. You start reading it, the armor gets stronger. Your faith gets stronger in God, and when you get stronger in God, life's problems get a lot easier, and that, I was talking to Pastor Dave today. I'm I was feeling like I was stressed out, but I'm, str I'm stressed out in a good way because I was trying to figure out more ways I can be a service. I mean, yeah, I was driving myself nuts, but in reality, is that ever a bad thing? 
wanting to be a service to someone. I mean, today I have good reasons to be stressed out. And that's because God protects me with the armor of God. When we get to do these things, and that it not only builds relationships with God, it always builds relationships with each other as you're working through this. And that when we all become one, it's not just that we're all Christians, that we're all family. There's a connection there. There's a connection. I, I can honestly say my con connection with my wife has gotten stronger. The more I study this, the more I put in the effort, the relationship gets stronger. And that we have more conversations that aren't in any way useless. I've n we've never sat there and talked about God and said, oh, well, this was a waste of 20 minutes. And that the only thing it gets is it gets us closer together. And I get to not only learn more about God, I get to learn more about her and her understanding, her belief. And when you're doing stuff like that and you realize that your belief is so much together, it brings you closer. And in the end, when that stuff happens, you're getting closer to God because that's what God wants. God wants us all closer, tighter, a family. And he wants everything to know, everybody to know that you are protected by him his word, his truth. And that when you have all that, everything is available to you at any time. I don't know when or what I'll do next. I mean, I was running something past Pastor Dave today and I didn't even think about it until this week. All of a sudden, I want, uh, want to try new things. And the only reason that's possible is because I have faith in God. I really do think he's protecting me in all things. And, you know, a long time ago when I was first started coming up here, I would sit there and talk about how Heather was used to always sit there and say, don't worry, God's got this. And that used to drive me nuts when, I was, when I'd hear that. But you know what? Now, I'm the one telling her that, too. We were talking about it today, and I'm like, God's got this. And that's the connection. We're constantly learning. We're constantly evolving the way God wants us to. And that's because he is protecting us with the armor of God. Every time we have some problems or issues, he takes care of it. Yes, we put in the work to do some of it, but the only reason it's possible that we can do it is because of God. So he gets all credit, all glory. We just get to be faithful and believe. All right, um, so that's all I have tonight. I will be doing the next three, probably in about two weeks, maybe. Um, so it'll be part two to the armor of God. Uh, next, our next session, Pastor Dave will be teaching. And do you have any idea where you're going with it yet? Okay, so we're going to be surprised. All right, so we're going to start with Ephesians 2. Cool. And, you know, I invite you, if you're at home, to come in here and join us. We do appreciate uh, all the people that are watching this online because we have noticed that we average about 30 people, 20 to 30 people to watch us online. We thank you for that. But you're always welcome to come here and join us. Um, so... I guess I'm going to pray us out for tonight. Thank you for everything. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for another night that you entered our house to be part of us, to teach us your truths and to show us how you're protecting us with the armor of God. We ask that you just bless our families, our loved ones, our church family, and we just ask that you protect everybody with the armor of God because only you can protect us. We cannot ask for anyone better than you on everything you've done for us. We ask that you look after the ones that are still suffering. Hopefully you can lead them into watching one of our videos and bringing them closer to the, you so that they can have the protection while they're out there. We ask that you protect the 
family members of our lost ones that we have had recently. Give them the protection of God, the armor of God, so that they can continue to do everything you ask them to do. We're just humble before you, and we just ask that you fill our hearts, fill our minds, and fill our souls, because we are just grateful the opportunities that you made possible. We ask this in your son's holy name, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you for coming tonight.